So welcome to this video series on aptitude presented by Mentors for IAS in association with Bangalore IAS Academy and Nama KPSC. So this is an initiative of Nama KPSC to help students to prepare and study from home with the help of YouTube videos, current affairs available on the website, PDF materials for every subject and online tests to track your preparation. So do remember to visit www.namakpsc.com for more information. So in this particular session as well, we will uh, be continuing with problems on trains. There are a few other problems uh, of different concepts. I mean, not many other concepts, but there are a few other types of problems when it comes to uh, time, speed and distance uh, in association or connected to problems on trains. So those type of problems we'll be solving today, as well as we will also be touching upon problems based on data sufficiency when it comes to problems on trains, so that we'll be able to cover up almost every type of problem when it comes to trains with this particular session. And even if not with all these kinds of problems that we'll be discussing and we'll be covering as of uh, today or as of with respect to this particular video, you should be able to solve every other or any other type of problem on trains as long as you have understood the concept and how you have to apply the concept of time, speed and distance when it comes to trains. So uh, without wasting any more time, let us start with our first question. So the first question says, a train 110 meters long passes a man running at 6 kilometers per hour in the direction opposite to that of the train in 6 seconds. So what is the speed of the train? Now this particular question is very simple since this being the first question I have taken a very simple question uh, maybe if you have you know forgotten or whatever it is this is nothing but to uh, you know refresh or brush or, 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 or to brush up the concepts or the formulas with respect to problems on trains. So this is very straightforward. So uh, in order for us to determine the speed of the train we have to consider the train which is of length. 110 meters, 110 meters or 0.11 kilometers in length. So length of the train is 0.11 kilometers. <clears throat> now this train passes a man running at 6 kilometers per hour in the opposite direction. So this man is running in the opposite direction at a speed of 6 kilometers per hour. Now this train takes 6 seconds to pass this man and hence we have to find out the speed of the train. What is the speed of the train? Now, I'm pretty sure everybody knows, even with respect to several other problems that we have uh, solved under time, speed and distance, whenever you have two entities moving in opposite direction, then the time taken by them to reach each other or to meet each other or to cross entirely will be nothing but the total distance divided by some of their speeds. Now, time taken by the train to cross the man entirely is nothing but uh, 6 seconds over here. Therefore, time is nothing but 6 seconds or 6 by 3600 hours. 6 by 3600 hours. Now, the question does not say that there is some distance between the train and the man. So, we will assume that the man is right over here at the beginning, at the front of the train or at the beginning of the engine of the train itself. Therefore, the distance to be covered is nothing but the length of the train itself. Therefore, distance is nothing but length of the train which is 0.11 kilometers. Here, S2. S2 is nothing but speed of the man which is 6 kilometers per hour. S1 is nothing but speed of the train which we have to determine. So just by replacing these things we should be able to determine speed of the train. What is T? T is nothing but 6 by 3600 which is equal to D by sum of the speeds. What is D? Nothing but length of the train that is 0.11 kilometers divided by S1 we have to find out let me just write it as S plus speed of the man which is 6 kilometers <coughs> per hour. 
so now we have to determine what is the value of s so cross multiplying before cross multiplying let me just 6 6 are 36 so this is 600 okay so we have s now it is 1 here s plus 6 is equal to <coughs> s plus 6 now 600 into 0 0.11 therefore s is equal to i am going to take 6 over here to the right hand side 600 into 0 0.11 is nothing but 66 minus 6 to the other side is minus 6 therefore s is nothing but 66 minus 6 that is equal to 60 kilometers per hour therefore the speed of the train is nothing but option b it is 60 kilometers per hour 60 kilometers per hour <clears throat> second question now the second question says two trains one from bengaluru to mysuru and the other from mysuru to bengaluru start simultaneously after they meet the trains reach their destinations after 9 hours and 16 hours respectively what is the ratio of their speeds now this particular question i would request you to try it by yourself before i solve it because if you are able to solve this particular question by yourself i would say time speed and distance the entire concept is understood you should be able to solve any other type of problem more or less you should be able to solve it when it comes to your competitive exams okay so this is a problem which i want you to try and solve by yourself even if it takes a few extra minutes it does not matter try to do it by yourself However, I am going to solve this now. So what the question is saying that there are two trains, there are two trains, one from Bengaluru, so one from Bengaluru and the other from Mysuru. Okay, so one from Bengaluru to Mysuru and the other from Mysuru to Bengaluru start simultaneously. So this is the distance between Bengaluru from Bangalore to Mysore from Bangalore to Mysore so after they meet the trains reach their destination destinations after 9 hours and 16 hours respectively what is the ratio of their speeds now the thing is that they have not given any other extra information so according to the question there is one train which is going to leave Bangalore towards Mysore and there is another train which is going to leave Mysore towards Bangalore and both the trains start at the same time both the start both the trains start at the same time so the starting time remains the same now this is very important now after that the question says that after they meet the trains will reach their destinations after 9 hours and 16 hours respectively i don't know where they are going to meet so according to the question i'm just going to know just for the sake of explanation i'm going to say that they are going to meet somewhere uh, say here okay just for the sake of explanation okay they will meet somewhere here okay so we have train one over here we have train one over here and we have train two over here so train one and train two start moving towards each other at the same time they start towards they start moving towards each other at the same time okay both the trains meet here both the trains meet here now after they meet over here they will cross each other and after that after meeting sorry uh, they meet here and after they meet the first train will take 9 hours it will take okay now this should have been somewhere over here but fine it, it, this is only for the sake of representation okay so don't take this literally that they are actually meeting here I don't know I am just saying they will meet somewhere here okay after meeting the train the first train train one will take nine hours to reach mysore from here not from bengaluru from here after meeting the first train will take nine hours to reach mysore whereas the second train will take 16 hours to reach bangalore after meeting here after meeting here now i am going to assume that let train one be moving at s1 kilometers per hour let the speed of train 1 be s1 kilometers per hour whereas <coughs> the speed of train 2 let it be s2 kilometers per hour so what i'm trying to say is that after they meet 
train one traveling at s1 kilometers per hour will cover rest of the distance at nine, in 9 hours whereas the second train will cover the second uh, the, uh, the remaining distance in 16 hours traveling at s2 kilometers per hour now let me assume that the total distance is d that the total distance be d between bangalore and mysore let this be d1 that is from this point that is a meeting point let me take it as o from the meeting point to mysore let it be d1 let the distance between uh, bangalore to the meeting point be d2 let it be d2 so what this is trying what i am trying to say is that <clears throat> see i am doing this all for the sake of explanation so that you are able to understand what is this question how am i going to solve this particular question okay because once you understood i am going to tell you this question will not take you more than 10 seconds this question should not take you more than 10 seconds once you understand how this particular question has to be solved the question seems to be difficult you know uh, 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 on the face of it yes it is difficult but once you understand this is very very simple so in order for me in order for it to be simple in order uh, in order for me to ensure that you should be able to solve in 10 seconds i am doing all these things so here d1 so what i'm trying to say is that train the first train that is train t1 covers d1 distance in 9 hours traveling at s1 kilometers per hour now s1 kilometers per hour is the average speed of the train throughout the entire journey train 2 after meeting the first train covers the rest of the distance that is d2 in 16 hours traveling at speed s2 kilometers per hour where d where distance d is nothing but d1 plus d2 d1 plus d so can i say that d1 distance 1 is equal to s1 into 9 because distance is equal to speed into time similarly d2 is equal to s2 into 16 hours that is the time taken to cover d2 at speed s2 so i hope you've understood why d1 is equal to s1 into 9 d2 is equal to s2 into 16 now the next thing that I am going to explain is important. Please try to understand or else you will not follow what is happening here. So, see here, both trains T1 and T2 leave Bangalore and Mysore respectively at the same time. So, this train is moving towards Bangalore. This train is moving towards Mysore. They meet at O. They meet at O. Meaning what? Train T1 takes t time let it be t time to cover distance d2 to reach o similarly train t2 also takes the train t2 also takes the same time to cover distance d1 and reach the point meeting point o i hope you understood this see both the trains are meeting at this meeting point that is o therefore it would mean that the first train is taking time t1 to reach o from bangalore train t2 will also take the same amount of time to reach the meeting point that is o after they start simultaneously so if t is the time taken for the first train to reach o then can i write time t is equal to d2 what is this distance d2 d2 divided by train t1 travels at what speed s1 not s2 at s1 speed this is also equal to train t2 covering distance d1 at speed what s2 at speed s2 so we get d2 by s1 is equal to d1 by s2 this is the relationship which i want now what i'm going to do is I am going to substitute D2 as S2 into 16 and D1 is equal to S1 into 9. So what am I going to get? I get S2 into 16 divided by S1 is equal to S1 into 9 divided by S2. I am substituting D1 as S1 into 9, S2 as, uh, sorry, D2 as S2 into 16. Therefore, I am taking S2 over here and I am bringing S1 over here. 
and 16 I'm going to take it to the denominator over here. So what do I get? S2 into S2 is S2 square divided by S1 square is equal to 9 by 16 or I can write this as S1 by S2 whole square is equal to 9 by 16. So what is 9? What is 16? 9 is nothing but the time taken by the first train to cover the rest of the distance after meeting the second train. Whereas what is 16? 16 is nothing but the time taken by the second train to cover the rest of the distance after meeting the first train. So here you can make note of this formula. S1 divided by S2 whole square is equal to T1 divided by T2. But this particular formula, I, I told you we can solve it in 10 seconds. This particular formula is only applicable for this type of question where the question says that both the train, it could be trains, cars, persons, whatever it is, they start from their origin, point of origin at the same time. They meet somewhere in between, but the time taken is the time taken to cover the rest of the distance by the two entities. Speed is not given, nothing is given, only if time is given or in times or if the speed, uh, if the time is not given or the speed is given, then also you can determine the time which is taken. So for these kind of questions, only you can remember this formula S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T1 by T2. If you don't remember, you can solve it by this method that I have done here. So this method is nothing but to derive the formula or the shortcut that is S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T1 by T2. Maybe there could be websites or books which will give you the, uh, uh, the, the shortcut straight away, but I have explained how do you get this shortcut itself so that you don't have to remember the shortcut. So S1 by S2 whole square is equal to 9 by 16 where the question is asking for what is the ratio of their speeds. Therefore S1 by S2 is what nothing but root of 9 by 16 that is 3 by 4 or S1 is to S2 is nothing but 3 is to uh, sorry <coughs> I think I have made a mistake sorry this should have been here my mistake my mistake. Now S2 by S1 is equal to 9 by 16 therefore S1 by S2 is 16 by 9. See, S2 by S1 is equal to 9 by 16. That is what I have got from here. Now, S1 by S2 would mean what? Nothing but 16 by 9. Therefore, S1 by S2 is not 3 by 4, but 4 by 3. Therefore, S1 is to S2 is nothing but 4 is to 3. I hope you understood this. It was, a, um, it was a silly mistake on my side. Therefore, the correct answer is 4 is to 3 or option B. Therefore, the correct answer is 4 is to 3. So, you can just remember S1 by S2 whole square is equal to, again, my mistake. It is not T1 by T2. I am sorry. The entire thing I have made a mistake. T2 by T1. T2 by T1. Please uh, rectify this. It is not S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T1 by T2. It is actually T2 by T1. S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T2 by T1. This was my mistake which I did you know, uh, due to the silly mistake which I did earlier. Please remember this. It is not S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T2 by, uh, T1 by T2. It is S1 by S2 whole square is equal to T2 by T1. Therefore, it is actually 16 by 9 or nothing but 4 is to 3. Next question. Question 3. <clears throat> now, question 3 says, <clears throat> a train starts from Mysuru at 4 p.m. and reaches Mandya at 5 p.m. Uh, another train starts from Mandya at 4 p.m. and reaches Mysuru at 5.30 p.m. So, the two trains will meet each other at what time okay so we have Mysuru and we have we have Mysore and we have Mandya okay so let me just say that uh, this is the distance between Mysore and Mandya so uh, this question is saying a train starts from Mysore uh, uh, at 4 p.m. and reaches Mandya at 5 p.m. meaning what what is the time taken by train 1 that is the first train to cover distance d it is 1 hour correct 4 pm to 5 pm so 
So first train takes one hour to cover distance D from Mysore to Mandya. Another train takes, sorry, another train starts from Mandya at 4 p.m. and reaches Mysore at 5.30 p.m. Meaning what? Train 2 takes 1.5 hours, takes 1.5 hours to cover distance D and go from Mandya to Mysore, go from Mandya to Mysore. So now the question is asking, uh, what is sorry uh, at, at, at what time will the two trains meet now this is very straightforward and this is very simple we always know when two entities are moving in opposite direction and in order for us to determine the time taken for them to meet each other it is nothing but the distance to the the, to the distance traveled in order to meet each other divided by sum of their speeds divided by sum of their speeds therefore time is equal to nothing but distance divided by s1 plus s2 now <clears throat> what is s1 we don't know what is the value of s2 that also we do not know however can i say that distance over here is nothing but speed 1 into time t1 here this is t1 this is t2 Similarly, distance over here is nothing but <coughs> S2 into T2. Distance is equal to S1 into T1. Distance is also equal to S2 into T2. Therefore, can I say S1 into T1 is equal to S2 into T2 where T1 is what? Only 1 R. Therefore, we only have S1 is equal to S2 into T2. T2 is what? 1.5 hours. Therefore, S1 is equal to 1.5 S2. 1.5 S2. Therefore, I should be able to substitute S1 as 1.5 S2 over here. Therefore, what am I going to write? T is equal to 1.5 s1 in place of s1 i am going to write 1.5 s2 plus s2 similarly what is d d is nothing but s2 into t2 where t2 is what nothing but 1.5 s2 therefore d is what d is also nothing but 1.5 s2 so what do we have here time is nothing but 1.5 s2 divided by 2.5 s2 s2 and s2 gets cancelled we get time is equal to 15 by 25 therefore they take 15 by 24 5 hours to actually meet each other however if you look at the options there is no there's no such thing as 15 by 25 hours therefore we have to determine how many minutes after 4 pm do they meet now we know that 15 by 25 okay how do we convert it into minutes See, 1 hour is nothing but 16 minutes. Therefore, 15 by 25 is how many minutes? This is nothing but 15 into 25. 15 by 25 into 60. Uh, so, we have 5 5s are 25. 5 12s are 60. 5 3s are 12 3s are nothing but 36 minutes. Meaning what? After the trains leave at 4 p.m., they will take 36 minutes to meet each other. Meaning what? What is, the, what is the time at which they meet each other? It is nothing but 4.36 p.m. Therefore, the correct option is A. The answer is 4.36 p.m. Next question, question number 4. <clears throat> now, question number 4 says, Two trains running in opposite directions cross a man standing on the platform in 27 seconds and 17 seconds respectively and they cross each other in 23 seconds therefore what is the ratio of their speeds what is the ratio of their speeds so what the question is saying is that they have there are two trains okay of length l1 and of length l2 moving at speeds s1 and s2 i'm assuming the length to be l1 and l2 and the speeds to be s1 and s2 now both the trains are moving in the opposite direction both the trains are moving in opposite directions so the first train takes uh, 27 seconds it takes 
27 seconds to cross a man stand, standing on the platform whereas the second train takes 17 seconds to cross a man standing on a platform so we know that <coughs> time is nothing but distance by speed time is nothing but distance by speed so based on this information for the first train can i say 27 by 3600 is equal to nothing but l1 by s1 because the train takes 27 seconds to cross a man standing on the platform where the distance traveled will be what nothing but length of the train therefore l1 traveling at s1 speed which is equal to 27 seconds or 27 by 3600 hours similarly for the second train which crosses the man in 17 seconds i will say it is 17 by 3600 is equal to l2 by s2 then the question further says the two trains will cross each other in 23 seconds now this is a situation where two entities are moving in opposite direction therefore again time is equal to distance by speed or 23 is equal to 3600 e that uh, uh, time is equal to distance by speed where 23 by 3600 is equal to distance by speed where distance is what here the distance traveled is nothing but total length of both the trains therefore distance is equal to l1 plus l2 now at this stage i'm pretty sure i don't have to explain everything i don't have to explain why d1 is equal to l1 by l2 if you've not understood it means that you've not gone through the previous two videos clearly so please do go through the previous two videos clearly so that you are able to clearly understand why is distance is equal to l1 plus l2 divided by the sum of their speeds which is nothing but s1 by s so we here we have 23 by 3600 is equal to l1 by l1 plus l2 divided by s1 plus s2 so here i will simply substitute for l1 and l2 so from the first uh, uh, time is equal to distance by speed l1 is nothing but 27 s1 divided by 3600 from here i get l2 is nothing but 17 s2 divided by 3600 now i'm going to substitute l1 and l2 over here please don't get you know uh, kind of anxious or frightened by big numbers these always get cancelled out very easily that is why it is important that you don't try to simplify them initially itself so i'm going to substitute for l1 and l2 over here so what do we get we get 23 divided by 3600 is equal to l1 is what 27 s1 divided by 3600 plus what is l2 l2 is nothing but 17 s2 divided by 3600 divided by s1 plus s2 so here the lcm i am easily able to take the lcm because the denominator so there's no need for me to take the lcm because the denominator is common so what do we get here we get 23 divided by 3600 is equal to 27 s1 divided by 3600 plus 17 s2 the whole thing divided by s1 plus s2 3600 and 3600 over here gets cancelled i'm going to take s1 plus s2 to the left hand side so what do we get here 23 into s1 plus s2 so we have 23 s1 plus 23 s2 is equal to 27 s1 plus 17 s2 now i'm going to take 23 s1 to the right hand side and i'm going to take 17 s2 to the left hand side so what do we get here we get 23 s2 minus 17 s2 is equal to 27 s1 minus 23 s1 now what do we get here 23 minus 17 s2 is nothing but 16 s2 is equal to 27 minus 23 s1 is nothing but 4 s1 i take s2 over here and 4 to the left hand side so what do we get we get 6 by 4 is equal to s1 by s2 or s1 by s2 is nothing but 3 by 2 therefore the correct answer is 3 is to 2 or option b it is option b 3 is to next question question number five now question number five says <coughs> a train now this is nothing but your data sufficiency this is nothing but your data sufficiency okay now 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव से ट्रेन रनिंग एट अ सर्टन स्पीड क्रॉसेस अ स्टेशनरी इंजन इन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड सो देर इज अ ट्रेन ओके नाउ अ ट्रेन इज रनिंग एट सर्टन स्पीड इट टेक्स ट्वेंटी सेकेंड्स टू क्रॉस एन इंजन to find out the speed of the train which of the following information is necessary now speed is what speed is nothing but distance into time now the time taken for this train to cover the stationary engine is already given that is 20 seconds now apart from that i also need the distance i also need the distance what is the total distance the total distance will be length of the entire train plus length of the engine as well engine will also have some considerable length therefore distance is what l1 that is length of the train or lt plus length of the engine therefore in order for me to find out the answer i will need length of both this both uh, uh, that is the train as well as the engine so for your data sufficiency what information is necessary only length of the train not enough only length of the engine not enough either length of the train or the length of the engine no we need both length of the train as well as length of the engine therefore the correct option is option d it is option d so this is a part of your data sufficiency next question <clears throat> now question 6 says what is speed of the train it only says what is the speed of the train first statement says it is a 280 meters long train which crosses a signal post in 18 seconds so in order to determine speed one second for speed i need distance into time if you take the first statement 280 meters long train crosses a signal pole in 8 18 seconds do i have time yes it is 18 seconds do i have distance yes it is length of the train itself a signal pole will not have considerable length it is negligible it is negligible therefore speed is nothing but distance into time we are able to find out speed of the train how about the second statement 280 meters long train crosses a platform in 45 seconds do i have time yes i have time what is distance distance is nothing but length of the train plus length of the platform do i have length of the train yes it is 280 meters do i have length of the platform no i don't have length of the platform so am i able to determine speed of the train from the second statement it is not possible because we don't have length of the train therefore it is only from the first sorry it is only from the first statement that we will be able to determine the answer therefore it is option a only one it is option a that we are able to determine what is the speed of the train seventh question the seventh question says a train crosses a signal in n seconds therefore what is the length of the train now for length of the train lt is nothing but speed into time speed into time now this is nothing but the distance nothing but the distance over here oh sorry i think i made a mistake over here speed is nothing but distance by time my mistake i uh, i'm just rushing through the questions and i am just you know making silly mistakes now uh, this is no speed is equal to distance by time my my mistake you know while, while doing the next question just came to mind what kind of a silly mistake that i have done here speed is equal to distance by time over here see this is what i said when you are you know when you are kind of rushing through or when you are in a hurry you tend to make silly mistakes now obviously i know speed is what distance by time i know it but still i made this mistake over here uh so i just want you to correct this i mean correction is not required the explanation remains the same the explanation stands good this is the only mistake that i did instead of writing speed is equal to distance by time i wrote speed is equal to distance into time i'm sorry my mistake next question so this is seventh so here yes length of the train that is distance is equal to speed into time okay so what is the length of the train the first statement says the train crosses a platform of 100 meters in m seconds so here from this particular question okay length of the train is what is see lt is equal to speed of the train into n seconds into n seconds now n seconds mean it is some seconds we should be able to determine it the the, the first statement says length of the train plus length of the platform which is 100 meters is uh, it is it is able to cross it in m seconds 
the speed of the train remains the same in m seconds so therefore i can say lt plus 0.1 is equal to s into m over here now there are two unknown variables length of the train and the speed of the train now don't say that n and m are also unknown variables it represents some value for the sake of the question take n and m to represent some value that is what the question is trying to say it is not simply n and m there are some variables the only two things that are uh, 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 that are unknown is uh, are the speed of the train and length of the train however can i substitute s as length of the train divided by the time taken n over here yes so can i say length of the train plus 0.1 is equal to speed is what nothing but length of the train divided by n divided by n into m therefore can i determine the length of the train now of course i can determine length of the train therefore from the statement first statement it is possible for me to determine the length of the train let me try the second statement over here is it possible for me to determine the length of the train from the second statement the second statement says the train is running at speed of 80 kilometers per hour the train is running at speed of 80 kilometers per hour now it says <coughs> what is the length of the train therefore length of the train is nothing but 80 kilometers per hour into the time taken that is n is it possible for me to determine the length of the train of course it is possible for me to determine length of the train from the second statement as well therefore it is possible for us to determine the length of the train from the first statement or the second statement therefore it is either one or two therefore it is option d which is the correct answer therefore the correct answer is either one or two so here we have some practice questions we have uh, three practice questions over here uh, the answers for which will be posted in the comment section some of you had doubts in one of the previous videos two or three videos i have already sent in the solution or the answers for the for your doubts to the nama kpsc handle it should be posted anytime soon uh, and i do apologize for some silly mistakes in today's session i was just trying to rush through it so uh, however i want you to know that silly mistakes can happen at any time so it is important that you are always calm and composed especially when it comes to your aptitude because silly mistakes can happen anywhere because a plus sign can become a minus sign a minus sign can become a plus sign and the entire answer will go wrong so please take care understand how uh, questions have to be solved if you do it step by step the uh, chances or the probability of you making a mistake is always brought down so understand don't rely only on shortcuts do it step by step be as neat as possible you should be able to get the correct answer now uh, please do try to practice these questions in the next video we'll take up some other topic other than trains so with this particular session we are covering and completing problems on trains So if you do have any doubts, please do write to us in the comment section. I, I do send the solutions to the uh, Nama KPAC handle whenever possible. They will be posting or replying to your comments. So thank you. Please do follow us for more such videos.